I heard nothing, but let's assume that that recording was working. Um, and get my chat going. I do want to, I know I'm a little bit behind on grading and I apologize for that in terms of the quizzes. I did want to address something because um, many of you did something on the quiz that is not mathematically wrong at all, um, but maybe was a little bit more work than folks needed to do. So I'm now going back in time to quiz five, sorry. But if I go back in time to quiz five, I just wanna revisit um, that A cubed minus B cubed factoring formula. Good morning. And if I've got that A cubed minus, sorry, if I've got that A cubed minus B cubed and I'm trying to get that thing factored, that's gonna factor as A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Now, I know that on the quiz, I gave you perhaps a slightly more challenging thing because I put a fraction in there. Um, and some people did clever things with that fraction. So I just wanted to point out that if I have something like, let's say X squared, minus one eighth, sorry, x cubed minus one eighth. If I'm trying to get that factored, first of all, we, we should be able to recognize that that is two perfect cubes because this is x cubed minus one half cubed. And if we do that, then we can follow the formula directly using the x and the one half. And I can say x minus one half x squared plus one half x plus one half squared. Now on the quiz, some of you did a clever thing, which is not mathematically wrong. And I'm guessing somewhere on the internet, someone suggested that you do this. Um, but it is important that if you're going to do it, that you do it correctly. So some of you, it looks like looked at this and were like, dang, fractions suck. Cool. If fractions suck, that's totally fine. Um, we can handle the fractions. So one option is to sort of factor out that one eighth. Now, when you do that, we're looking for, as I multiply the one eighth back in, how do I make sure that I get back to what I started with? So one eighth times what is gonna give me that X cubed? It would have to be eight X cubed. And then one eighth times what is gonna give me the one eighth? It would be a one. Totally fine to do that. Just be careful. I think it's more work to do this, but if that helps you in your head, go for it. So now this term has to be two X whole thing squared, which would give me a four X squared. Then I'd have a positive one times two X and then that one squared. Yeah. How did I get the one eighth? Good question. I wouldn't, I just wanna be really clear that I, I wouldn't do it this way. There were just a lot of people doing quiz five this way. Some of you made mistakes somewhere along the way. So I just wanted to address it, that if this was a method that you wanted to use, that you just wanna be careful um, about what happens to that fraction and that it's gotta come along with us. In terms of how I got the one eighth, this was, I just made up this problem. So I don't know if you mean from the beginning, but if I'm going to factor a one eighth out to not have a fraction over here,
this is the way that it would factor. I don't know if that really addressed the question on Zoom, but bottom line, I wouldn't do it this way, but it's okay too. Cool. Let's move on with our lives and talk about solving systems of equations. Um, I don't know why this does not want to stay in focus today. So first of all, I want to talk about what it means to be a solution to a system of equations. And by system, we just mean more than one. Um, so if I had two equations like x minus y is, I wrote three, so I'll just go with it. x minus three is equal to y. And two x minus, for y is equal to two. Sure. I claim that the solution to this system is x equals five, y equals two. Or I could write that as the ordered pair five comma two. So if I wanted to check that that's a solution, Check that I'm right in what I gave you. Um, that means that these values have to make both equations true. So if I try the top, that would look like five minus three would need to be equal to two. That looks true to me. And if I look at the second equation, that would say two times five minus four times two. So 10 minus eight is equal to two, and that's also true. So what it means to be a solution is that those values make both of the equations true. In terms of finding solutions, there are three primary ways that we find solutions to systems of equations. Graphing. Substitution and elimination. My guess is that even if you don't know them by these terms, you probably have at least done substitution and a lot of you have probably also done elimination. Um, let me start with the graphing piece. Oh, right. So there's a question in the chat about how I got the five and two. We'll get there. I started by giving you the answer. I, I, so we'll, we'll get to where my five and two came from, but I, I gave us that answer. Now we're going to talk about how we could get it. Graphing is a super great method as long as I'm using a graphing calculator or a computer. Let's be real. We're not generally graphing so precisely by hand that finding solutions graphing is a great idea. What I do think is important as a concept for graphing um, is that if I show you what the graph looks like, you should recognize that that solution is the place where the two graphs intersect. So if we're solving this graphically, the solution to the system is the point of intersection. So if I graph these, um, y equals x minus three, I'm not gonna do it super precisely, I'm gonna fake it. 
Um, but this is certainly a graph. It's a line with a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative three. So something like this. This one is in that other form for the equation of the line that I find the hardest one to try to graph. So I'm going to rearrange it to make it say y equals. And if I did that, I'd have 2x minus 2 is equal to 4y, or y is equal to 1 half x minus 1 half. So I'd have this other line that's like here and a less steep slope, and it does something like that. And the solution to that system is going to be the point where those two intersect. And I'm telling you that I've already done the work for us. It is five comma two, which is at least plausible based on my graph. In terms of expectations for this class, if I give you the graph, you should be able to tell me the solution by finding the point of intersection. In terms of the chapter seven homework, um, the chapter seven homework is going to ask you to do a few problems where you're graphing them to find the solution. I'm totally fine with you using a tool like Desmos to do that graphing, because this is a really great technique for us, especially in pre-calc and calculus, that when we're doing it, we're usually doing it in Desmos, or we're doing it in a graph, we're using some sort of graphing tool to do it. So the understanding piece should be that the place where they intersect is the solution to the system. Substitution. If I'm solving a system of equations by substitution, it means I'm going to substitute one of the variables in for the other one. So if I go back to what our original system looked like here, so x minus three is equal to y, and two x minus four y is equal to two. What that substitution method means is that I'm gonna take x minus three, and if that's really what y is equal to, then I can substitute it in for y. and end up with 2x minus four times x minus three is equal to two. Now, after we've done the substitution, we should be left with some kind of equation that's got only one letter in it. Now we're using our chapter one skills to solve this thing. So I'm going to distribute the minus four out so that I've got two X minus four X plus 12 is equal to two. I'll combine my like terms. I've got negative two X subtracting 12 from both sides. I've got negative 10 and I'm going to get X is equal to positive five. Now the thing about the substitution method is because we substituted one of the variables in at the end, well, this isn't really the end. Once we've solved for one of the variables, the solution always needs to look like either my values for my two variables or an ordered pair. We've only got one of them, which means we now have to go solve for the other one. If I want to know what y equals, I'm going to plug it into the equation that says y equals. Since y is equal to x minus three, I'm gonna get my y value by doing that x minus three, and there's my two. So if I were writing the answer as an ordered pair, that answer is gonna look like five comma two. I'm pausing there for a second in case there are questions. And also because I feel like I'm about, cough, about to start coughing so I'm gonna take a drink.
Okay, I am not seeing questions in the chat or the room. So let's talk about elimination. Um, I would say that in general, I'm gonna look at the form of the equations that I have to decide whether I think substitution or elimination is a better, and by better, I mean faster to get to the answer method. Elimination comes down to eliminating one of the variables. Now, I'm going to say that the form that this equation, that this system of equations started in, I would not choose to use the elimination method. Because my system of equations already had one variable solved for in one of the two equations, I think substitution method would be the way to go. But let's walk through what that elimination method would look like. I'm gonna look at these two equations and I have them neatly stacked on top of each other. Um, and for no good reason at all, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative two. The reason that I'm gonna multiply the top equation by negative two is because the goal with elimination is to actually add the two equations together, like add everything on the left-hand side together and set that equal to adding everything on the right-hand side together. And after we do that, we're hoping that one of the variables has been eliminated. So I'm gonna take this top equation and I'm gonna multiply the entire thing by negative two. As soon as I find a pen that wants to write today. And I'm gonna go ahead and write it underneath just so that I have some more space. So if I think about distributing that negative two out, I'd have negative two X, negative two times negative three would give me a positive six, and negative two times Y would give me a negative two Y. When I add these two equations together, two X plus negative two X gives me zero X. So my X has been eliminated. I can't really add negative four Y and six because they are not like terms. So I'm just gonna have to write them both down. And on the right-hand side, I can't really do any, I can't combine the two and the negative two Y. So I'll just have to write them both down. Now I'm gonna group all of my Y's on one side and my numbers on the other. And I'm gonna choose to add four Y to both sides so that I end up with a positive two Y over here and subtract two from both sides so that I end up with a four. And I get that Y is equal to two. Just like with substitution, when I get to this point, I still have to solve for the other variable. If it's a solution to the system, it should make both equations true meaning we can choose which of the two equations to plug into. I usually choose the one with smaller numbers. So I would choose to plug that two for Y back into the top equation. So I'd have X minus three is equal to two or X is equal to five. And I'm gonna get that same five comma two as an ordered pair being a solution. For this particular system, I would have chosen substitution. Pausing for a second for people to get caught up in their notes and then we'll do some more examples. Not seeing questions, so I'm gonna flip it here. Um, 
Okay, question, yep, for sure. Okay. Um. So let's say that I've got um, 3x minus y equal to seven and x plus y is equal to one. Oh, yeah, right. So if my instructions are to solve the system, I'm probably not going to graph those unless I have been explicitly told that I need to graph them. Because of the way that the two systems are because of the way the two equations are written, this is a case where I would choose elimination. And the reason that I would choose elimination is that neither of these already say y equals or x equals. But I'm gonna go through it both ways because really genuinely, although on the homework, I want you to practice both for the quiz for chapter seven, I don't care how you solve it, except for the one that specifically says you have to graph. Um, for the rest of them, I don't care which of these two methods. So I'm going to start with elimination and then we'll do it again. So if I go for elimination here, I'm going to take a look at that 3x minus y is equal to 7 and the x plus y is equal to 1. And I already can see that if I add everything on the left-hand side, my y's are going to be eliminated. So I don't have to multiply by a number this time. I can just go straight into adding these two things together. So if I add everything on the left-hand side, 3x plus x would give me 4x. Negative y plus y would give me 0y. And 7 plus 1 is 8. So I've already got that 4x is equal to 8 or x is equal to 2. One of the downsides of elimination is it does usually mean you do a little bit more work at the end once we have to plug that value back in, but it's not usually terrible. So if I plug the x equals 2 in, I'm going to choose the second equation. It shouldn't matter which one you pick. But if I pick the second equation that says two plus y is equal to one and y is gonna be negative one. Just for completeness, let's see what would happen if I did choose the top equation. Well, if I had chosen the top equation to plug it into, I'd have three times two minus y is equal to seven. Three times two is six. So I'd have six minus y is equal to seven or negative y is equal to one, which would mean y is equal to negative one. So I get the same answer either way. Doesn't matter which one we plug it into. And when I put that together as an ordered pair, my solution looks like two comma negative one. Because my x value always comes first, and my y value always comes second. Question. So it doesn't matter which so that was how we solved it. Yeah. And the first thing that came into my head was all the history of the three, but I was plugging on the side of the three as well. Sure. And then, well, I got this in that, so it's completely fine to eliminate the other one. So let's do it the other way. So if your brain sees that 3x minus y equals 7 and the x plus y equals 1, and you're thinking, oh, I'll just make the, the x's go away. Totally fine. Um, also totally fine, you can either add or subtract. Oh, I personally make fewer mistakes when I choose to multiply by a negative number and then add the terms together. 
that I make fewer mistakes that way than when I try to do subtraction. So this is the choice I would make. So if I write out, if I rewrite that second row, distributing the, th the negative three, that would look like negative three X minus three Y is equal to negative three. And now I'm adding that top row and my new bottom row together. If I add these together, then I've got zero X minus four Y is equal to positive four. And I still get that negative one for Y. And then it doesn't matter which one I plug that into. Sorry, put that up a little bit. Doesn't matter which one I plug that into. I should get that same value of two for X. So if I take that second row, X plus negative Y is equal to one. X is equal to two, I get the same answer. And that's always gonna be true. It does not matter which one you eliminate. We're always gonna get the same answer. I do wanna solve this one using substitution as well. Um, mostly because I find that substitution is often the most comfortable thing for students. It's probably the thing that you've practiced the most over the years. Doesn't matter which one of these I work with, but I need to solve one of these equations or to rearrange one of these equations to isolate a variable. For me, the second one looks nicer to work with. So on the second one, I would either subtract the Y from both sides or subtract the X from both sides. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna subtract the Y from both sides so that this looks like X is equal to one minus Y. And that's gonna give me something to plug in for X on the top equation. It's gonna make that top equation look like three times one minus Y minus a Y is equal to seven. And when I distribute everything out, that's three minus three Y minus a Y is equal to seven or three minus four Y is equal to seven, which means minus four Y is equal to four and Y is equal to negative one. So no matter how we approach this problem, we keep getting the same answer, which is good. We like it when math works out. Um, to finish this off, once I know what Y is, now I'm looking for that X equals equation. And since X equals one minus Y, that's gonna be a one minus a negative one and I get two. Some people find it comforting that there are lots of correct ways to do a problem. Many people find it frustrating that there are many correct ways to do a problem. Either way, it's kind of what we're stuck with. Should I give us one more? Pausing for a second. Okay.
So anyone have a preference? Elimination or substitution? I would lean towards elimination also, just because to me, it's kind of easy to see. I got some votes for substitution on Zoom. Really doesn't matter. Why don't you all take a minute to try to solve this on your own? You can pick substitution or elimination, either one. Weirdness, but, um, it was intentional. Yeah, I've written an intentionally weird problem. Yeah, I wanted everybody to see the weirdness, but um, folks here in the room have noticed that I've written a weird problem, and I have, and so I wanted to. So I'm going for elimination. And if you did substitution, you should have found something similarly weird that happens. So I'm gonna take the top row and multiply it by a positive two, which means that I would get six X plus two Y is equal to four. But when I add those two equations together, everything canceled out on the left-hand side, which means this says zero is equal to nine. Is zero actually equal to nine, folks? It is not. This has no solution. I really did myself a disservice on um, these two equations, but I wanna talk about what that no solution means graphically. So one of my equations was three X plus Y equals two. And if I rearrange that, that says Y is equal to two minus three X, or I'm gonna put that into like our MX plus B formula. Just as a refresher, that means that my slope is three, is negative three, and the y-intercept is positive two. Well, if I take our other equation, negative six x minus two y is equal to five, and I also get this into y equals mx plus b form, I'm gonna have negative two y is equal to positive six X plus five. Dividing everything by negative two, I'm gonna get Y is equal to negative three X minus five halves. So this has a slope of negative three and an intercept of negative five halves. So if I were to graph these two lines on the same axis, this one has a y-intercept of positive two and a slope of negative three. This one has a y-intercept of negative five halves and a slope of negative three. So these two lines are parallel. And if they're parallel, it means they're never going to cross. So we don't have a solution because the slopes of these two lines are the same and they're parallel. There is another weird thing that can happen when we try to solve a system of equations. So this is one of the weird things where we end up with no solution. Um, usually the no solution things end up looking like you kind of worked both sides and you got that one number is equal to a different number, which is obviously not true. The other weird thing that can happen um, is, I'm gonna be nice to myself and I'm gonna keep things pretty easy. I'm gonna say y is equal to 
2x plus 1. My other, my second equation is going to be negative 4x plus 2y is equal to 2. Well, if I had to solve these, I would choose substitution because one of them is already solved for a variable. And if I go with substitution and I substitute that 2x plus 1 in for y, then this is going to look like negative 4x plus 2 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 2. When I distribute things out, that's a negative 4x plus a 4x plus a 2 is equal to 2. So this is the other weird thing that can happen. So the question is, when is 2 equal to 2? And my answer is always, that is true. This has infinite solutions. And this happens when secretly those two lines were actually the same line. As having no solution or infinitely many solutions, you will for sure have to do that in calculus. In terms of in here, I think there's only one question on the homework where weird stuff happens. <laughs> Um, but yes, you should be prepared to have to do that in calculus for sure. Yeah. Um, so in terms of that, like infinitely many solutions thing, if I take these two equations and rearrange them, they both rearrange to say exactly the same thing. So if I were to graph these, they're actually both the same line, just stacked on top of each other secretly the same line. Now that doesn't mean that every single X and Y value is a solution, but it does mean that any X and Y point on that line is a solution. Like a point over here is not a solution to that system but any point that's on the line is a solution. So if I asked you to give me at least one solution to this, you could pick any point to plug in for X and give the corresponding Y value. So although there are infinite, infinitely many solutions, if I asked for, you know, give three specific solutions, then these would look like any pairs that make it work. So I'm gonna be lazy, I'm gonna plug in zero for X, I'm gonna get one for Y, one for X, two times one plus one, that's three, and two for X, two times two is four plus one is five. So those would be three possible solutions of the infinitely many. Good times. Okay. Um, we've, we just have two minutes left, but let's go ahead and get one more going. I am going to completely make up numbers. That means we are probably going to get fractions for answers. For the rest of them, I've been like strategically making things work out to whole numbers. Not doing that this time. How about? 2x minus 5y is equal to 1. And oh, and I'm going to make it extra gross. Yeah? No, I don't have time for extra gross. Regular gross. Um, 3x plus y is equal to 2. So 
So if I looked at these, I would probably choose elimination and I would probably choose to multiply the bottom row by five. Alternately, if you were going for substitution, I would probably solve the bottom row to make it say y equals. Question. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, so you could choose to multiply the top by a three and the bottom by a two and make one of those negative. Yeah, that's an option also. However you want to solve it, try solving it. We've only got one minute left, but maybe you can get, maybe you can get it done in a minute. So I am out of time, so I am going to leave it there. Yes, they're gross, but it's okay. Leave them as fractions. So when you're taking pre-calc or calculus, you're not going to have a, you won't be able to use a calculator. So leave them as fractions. And for sure, unless like from here on out, if it doesn't say that you need to get a common denominator, walk away. Two minus 33 over seven is a numerical answer, walk away. Good times. Um, I do have Zoom office hours this afternoon from two to three if anybody's interested. Otherwise, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Uh -huh.